This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 427 here on our Friday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Controversy once again in the Northwest Hendricks School District. This after a policy that has existed since 2016 is stirring up some conversation. Yeah, basically the parents there at a meeting were given a notice that they don't want the parents to post anything negative about the school on social media essentially or speak out at these meetings. Um, so parents are saying that this is against their rights, this is against their free speech, and the ACLU stepping in to say this is against the First Amendment. So we're going to be breaking down exactly what that policy is and what the parents' stance is and talk to a few parents, and we'll have that story coming up for you here on Good Morning Indiana. We want to take a turn now and check in on the weather. As you can see behind us right now, radar is awfully active. <laughs> Pretty much no matter where you are yes. in central Indiana this morning, you are seeing rainfall. Yeah, so we're seeing light rain right now. You might have heard there was some heavier rain oh, yeah. overnight last night. I definitely heard it downtown at my apartment. It was coming down very heavy. We're seeing that lighter phase of this first wave moving through this morning. That is also bringing us some patchy fog. There's just a lot of moisture associated with this system as it's moving up from the Gulf. So as you head through the day, it's starting warm and it's staying pretty warm throughout the day, but we are starting with that patchy fog and some light rain this morning. As we head through the day, we'll see a little bit of a break midday before we see another round of showers moving in this afternoon and into the evening overnight and then tomorrow is when we have our better chance of seeing a rain snow mix and possibly even some accumulating snow by Saturday afternoon. So quite a bit of things going on in the weather department. Of course, we're going to keep an eye on all that for everybody. Alyssa, thank you. Well, another story we have for you today is an auction that's taking place. Ike and Jonesies, you may remember our story that their last day was New Year's Eve, a big party to kind of go out with a bang. And now they have all this memorabilia all over the walls that they've been collecting for years now, and they want to sell it to you. Yeah, so if you're in the market for maybe a neon sign or some other fun memorabilia, they have got you covered. Our Kelsey Anderson We'll be taking a look at what exactly will be for sale yeah. later today. Oh, I might want that disco ball. I know, there's a lot of fun <laughs> stuff there. Okay, another story we have today, Rafael Sanchez. This is so cool. He met up with a Franklin resident who's celebrating her 100 and, what is it, 7th seventh seventh, birthday? Yeah, 107. Yeah. She has seen a lot. Crazy. A lot of New Year's, Yes, you could yes, say. seriously. So we're going to be meeting this woman, Ada Pearl, here and talk a little bit about her life. I guess she decided to go into a nursing home when she was, you know, 105. She thought oh. that'd probably be a good time to do that. So <laughs> she sounds like an awesome lady and we are going to have more on that story <laughs> coming up in Good News Friday. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. And the ACLU are raising concerns about a school district's social media policy, why some claims it violates the First Amendment. And a former Warren Township school bus driver is facing charges, why he's being accused of choking a student. Plus, a beloved downtown bar is closed, but before they go, the owners want to share some of the memorabilia, how you can get a piece of Ike and Jonesy's history. It's 4.30 here on your Friday morning, the shortest week ever, <laughs> seems like. I'm Meredith Barrett. And I'm Lauren Casey. I think we could go with Wednesday being off every week. Yeah. It makes the week go by oh so much goodness, faster. Yes, <laughs> Alyssa Donovan is here because as you're heading out the door, it is a wet one here in central Indiana. Yes. Alyssa, it was coming down hard when we came to work. Yeah, so it's been on and off some of those heavier downpours overnight and throughout this morning. We are starting to see more light rain this morning, but we're also seeing some patchy fog. So you want to give yourself maybe a little bit of extra time this morning because that fog Fog is pretty dense in some areas. Temperatures this morning, we're starting in the 40s with that areas of rain and fog out there. We're down to just about a half a mile of visibility in Indianapolis right now, about three miles of visibility in Muncie, two and a half miles of visibility in Lafayette. And you can see we do have some denser areas on our map here. So just be aware of that. We're going to continue to see that fog build in this morning. And that's all part of that moisture that's associated from this deep low pressure system that's moving up from the south. As it moves up, 
We are continuing to see those light rain showers this morning. We do have a few heavier spots to the southeast. Those areas have received the most rain so far, but we've picked up quite a bit here in Indianapolis as well. Throughout the day, we'll continue to see that system build up. We'll see a bit of a midday break as that system continues to rotate. And then by this afternoon and evening, that's when we're going to see another chance of some rain showers, chance of some snow showers by tomorrow afternoon. Highs today will reach the low 50s. All right, Alyssa, thanks so much. Here is a live look right now at a wet commute on the west side. This is I-465 and I-74. You can see a few headlights making their way across your screen right now. Watch for ponding as you're heading out there this morning and there may be some reduced visibility. You can see that a little bit here on our camera. Let's take a look right now in the downtown area, I-65 and I-70 at the north split. Same story here. We'll continue to keep a close eye out for any crashes or delays throughout the morning and of course, we'll keep you updated. At 432, parents in Hendricks County are raising concerns about a local school district's policy limiting what parents can say on social media. The Northwest Hendricks School Corporation is standing behind its parent code of conduct, but the ACLU is calling it a violation of the First Amendment. Their policy says parents should not use social media to make rude or offensive comments or fuel outrage towards school staff or the school. The policy has been in effect since 2016, but one parent tells Call 6 Investigates the district handed out copies of the code of conduct at a December board meeting. The district says that was in response to quote inappropriate and disruptive behavior at previous meetings. This comes after months of criticism from parents in the community over the handling of a sexual misconduct claim against a Tri-West High School teacher. They're trying to silence us on speaking out against them and the way that they've handled the whole situation. I take it as we're trying to get things done you know, they're not doing it, so we've got to find a way to get it done. And social media is the way to get it, get the word out there that, hey, this isn't being handled properly. Parents who violate the code of conduct can be removed from school property and banned from school grounds. The ACLU of Indiana says the policy is, the, is a violation of the First Amendment. The district released a statement saying that as far as that goes, quote, no action has or will be taken regarding what others may say or share on social media but encourages civility in all forms of discourse. At 434, a now former Warren Township school bus driver accused of choking a student is facing criminal charges. Eric Carter is charged with battery on a person less than 14 years old. Kimberly Kincaid told RTV6 that attack happened to her eight-year-old grandson in November, and the family called for charges to be filed. The district released a statement saying an investigation found the driver did handle the boy inappropriately. There's no evidence of choking. Carter was fired. Two people face several charges after fleeing from police on I-465 and driving the wrong way. Traffic cameras caught a yellow Dodge Ram getting on the exit ramp at 71st Street Thursday afternoon. IMPD had been chasing the truck but called off the pursuit for safety reasons. Plainfield police say the truck eventually got off the highway and crashed into another vehicle at US 40 and Main Street. They say the truck was reported stolen in Madison County. No one was hurt. Wow. Well, a man is charged in the shooting death of an Indianapolis teenager. The Marion County Prosecutor's Office formally charged 29-year-old Dwayne Harris with murder, robbery, and felony firearm possession. He's accused of killing 17-year-old Leandre Lane in a drive-by shooting on North Franklin Road back in April. RTV6 is working for you to get an update for neighbors who are still waiting on the demolition of a house they call dangerous and unhealthy. Months ago, city officials say the house would be torn down in 2020. Residents on Indy South Side say they have been working to get the halfway burned down house on the corner of Harlan and Kelly torn down for years. In the past several months, they've ramped up efforts to get rid of this house after needles were found on the sidewalk in front of it. I've been in this neighborhood since I was 16, and this, I'm 27 this year. This house has been a problem since I was 16. Please tear down the house. That would be the greatest thing they could do. I mean, uh, we've been told for so long, but nothing. So when can we see action? Please.
A spokesperson with the city of Indianapolis says the house is set to be added to a bid list for properties that need to be torn down. An exact date has not yet been given, but the bid list being put together is for the first quarter of this year. It is 436. Beloved bar Ike and Jonesy's is now closed, but first they're auctioning off this memorabilia that was decorating the walls. The owners are holding the auction this morning. The bar went out with a bang, holding a last hurrah party on New Year's Eve. Owner Rick Eichholz says collecting signs, photos, and neon lights has been one of the many fun parts of the job. The real fun has been over 30, in our 36 year, has been buying the things that I have put on the walls one day after the other, and people would bring me stuff, and I'd frame it and put it up. That's been a ball. Doors open at 8 a.m. and the auction starts at 10 o'clock. Hundreds of items, including TVs, tables, kitchenware, and more, will be on sale. According to the owner, a new landlord plans to turn this building into a hotel. Next week, there will be another event to help connect former Celadon workers to new job opportunities. The Indiana Department of Workforce Development and Employee Indy will host a virtual job fair at 1.30 Wednesday afternoon. It's for employees impacted by the sudden closure of the trucking company last month. That Express, UPS, and online transport are just a few of the employers that will participate. You can find a link to register by going to HiringHoosiers.com and clicking on this story. The Pacers opened the new year at home against the Denver Nuggets last night. Jeremy Lamb posted 30 points in the game, but it wasn't enough as Indiana lost the lead at halftime. The Nuggets getting hot towards the end, handing the Pacers the loss 124-116. to 116. The Pacers got Atlanta for their next game. That is set for Saturday. In football news, a pair of former Colts players are one step closer to the Hall of Fame. The 15 finalists for the Pro Hall of Fame Class of 2020 were announced last night. Reggie Wayne and Edger and James both made the list. This is Wayne's first time on the ballot. The inductees will be announced February 1st. Tensions with Iran continue to rise after the U.S. killed a top Iranian commander. Coming up, why the Pentagon says it needed to take defensive action. And Delta flight attendants are suing the airline over their uniforms. Why they claim the clothes made them physically sick. Alyssa. And we are starting the day with rain showers. That's why it is a Storm Team 6 alert day and some fog. We're also ending the day with some rain showers. I'll have all the details coming up next. EV6, sponsored by Citizens Energy Group. Welcome back. Time right now is 441. Let's get a live look at traffic over near the airport. Maybe you're heading out to catch a flight this morning or picking up someone later today. It doesn't look like there are any problems here on I-70. Traffic is traveling up to speed in both directions. Tensions between the U.S. and Iran continue to escalate after an American airstrike in Baghdad killed a top Iranian military official. The Pentagon says they launched the attack because of alleged plans Iran had to attack American diplomats. ABC's Inez de la Cater has the latest. Tensions between the U.S. and Iran reaching a boiling point. The Department of Defense confirming in a statement at the direction of the president, the U.S. military has taken decisive defensive action to protect U.S. personnel abroad by killing Qasem Soleimani. ABC News learning Soleimani was killed by a drone strike conducted by U.S. Joint Special Operations that hit a convoy carrying Soleimani as he was leaving Baghdad's airport. Mr. Soleimani is, uh, he is not just a general, he is something almost a demigod uh, within the eyes of the Iranian people. He has um, been a hero of the Iranian people for a long time. The Pentagon argues Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members throughout the region and says it was Soleimani who was behind the recent attacks on U.S.-led coalition bases in Iraq and the strike that recently killed an American contractor. The U.S. then retaliating by taking out 25 members of an Iranian-backed militia, a move that kicked off two days of chaotic protests outside the American embassy in Baghdad. Defense Secretary Mark Esper with a warning on MSNBC on Thursday. You know, enough is enough. We have all the capabilities inherent in the United States military to either respond to uh, further attacks or to take preemptive action if additional attacks are being prepared. The president responding to the attack by tweeting out the image of an American flag, but just days ago insisting he did not want to go to war. I like peace and 
Iran should want peace more than anybody. Reaction from Congress has been swift and polarized, with Republicans praising the president's actions, while Democrats warn of war and question whether the president needed congressional approval. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, New York. It is 444. The large pool of candidates for the Democratic presidential race continues to shrink. One candidate now dropping out while another is cutting campaign costs. William Castro announced yesterday that he's bowing out of the race. The former Housing and Urban Development Secretary made the announcement on Twitter. His post saying, quote, I'm so proud of everything we've accomplished together. I'm going to keep fighting for an America where everyone counts, end quote. His campaign appeared to be near the end as it struggled to raise enough money to keep up with his opponent. An hour after Castro's announcement, it was released that Marion Williamson was laying off her national campaign staff. In a statement, the spiritual author said despite the layoffs, she's not suspending her bid for the White House. Williamson said she cannot, have, while she cannot afford a traditional staff, she wants to continue the conversation between candidate and voter. Members of both the Senate and the House are now urging the Supreme Court to reconsider or even overturn Roe v. Wade. Among the nearly 200 state lawmakers, 200 lawmakers, excuse me, both senators from Indiana and five representatives signed an amicus brief on the issue. The landmark Supreme Court decision legalized abortion in 1973. The 35-page letter discusses the overall abortion issue and an abortion access law in, India, in Louisiana. The law requires a doctor to have admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles of where the abortion is performed. It is the first abortion-related case to be heard by the court since Justices Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch to join the bench. Arguments are scheduled to be held in March. Hundreds of Delta Airlines employees are suing the airline over their uniforms. The lawsuit claims the uniforms provided by Land's End make them physically sick. Some flight attendants say that they've had an allergic reaction to the clothes. The suit claims employee tests found high levels of chemicals and heavy metals, including mercury. Delta says their tests show the uniforms are safe. Land's End did not respond to a request or comment. Time now is 446. It's a Storm Team 6 alert day. Alyssa, what do folks need to know? So we are starting this morning with some rain. We also have some fog out there. So you're definitely wanting to give yourself a little bit of extra time as you head out the door this morning. We have another round of rain coming in this afternoon, which could turn into a rain-snow mix possible overnight tonight and into your Saturday. So we have a few things going on in the forecast over the next 48 hours or so. One of the main things this morning, though, is that patchy fog across the area. We are seeing some dense spots right around Lafayette. We're down to just a mile and a half of visibility. And then in Indianapolis here, we're down to just a half a mile of visibility. So quite a bit of fog has developed that is partially due to that moisture that's being pulled up from the Gulf. That plume of moisture is continuing to bring us some light showers this morning as well. We had that heaviest rain overnight last night. You might have heard it at your house. And we are still seeing a few spots of heavier rain this morning, just to the south of Bloomington, moving towards towards I-65 right now. And then we're seeing some light showers right around Muncie as well, as well as moving through Indianapolis this morning at this time. This is all from that same low pressure system. That's gonna continue to move up from the Gulf throughout the day today. We're gonna see a little bit of a break midday and a lot of us are going to see a brief drying period. So here we are this morning around 5 a.m. We'll continue to see those showers build in. Most of the activity is going to be around the south and east areas of Indiana and right through central Indiana. So areas to the north, not as likely that you're going to see these showers this morning. Better chance of seeing some of them this afternoon. We'll see a little bit of a break midday where a lot of us are just going to see a small chance of a stray shower with most of the activity staying to the south of us before we start to see that spark up again this afternoon and evening. That's when we'll start to see those showers become a little bit more widespread as that moisture moves back up into central Indiana. Looks like the tail end of the system could bring us some snow so that's just a chance of that snow by Saturday morning, possibly again by the afternoon on Saturday. And that's just as the cold front associated with this system moves through and starts to drop those temperatures off. So if the moisture hangs around long enough on Saturday, we could see some light snow accumulation. If we do see it, it is going to be very light, probably not even an inch. Looking at Sunday, temperatures will be in the 40s. We are going to dry out and we'll see mostly sunny skies by then. So just have to get through the
the next uh, 24 to 48 hours or so. And then we are going to see a dry out Sunday and Monday. That's when things get back to average with those temperatures in the 40s with sunshine. And then we do have another chance of rain than snow on Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, Alyssa, thanks so much. Here is a look at your commute right now. It is a wet one here on the northeast side, I-465 and I-69, but traffic is still getting by just fine. No issues to slow you down. Let's take a look at our traffic now map. You can see no crashes to report around the Indy metro area. Planning out your drive heading southbound right now from the northwest side at I-865, heading down to I-70 at the north split. It's a 17-minute commute on Interstate 65 southbound. Let's take a look right now to the west side, I-70 here in Sam Jones Expressway. You can see the water on the road right there, but traffic is still moving by just fine. No crashes or delays in this area to slow down your Friday commute. With the new year, the FDA is requiring new guidelines for nutrition food labels. They now include side-by-side -side columns with information on a single serving as well as the full package. Added sugars must also be included on the label. Manufacturers that sell less than $10 million of a product still have until next year to comply. The FDA says it hopes it will change the way consumers make healthier food choices. Google says its artificial intelligence system can beat doctors at detecting breast cancer. The claim is based on a study testing the system's accuracy. The technology was developed through a collaboration between Google and cancer researchers. They trained an AI program to detect cancer using tens of thousands of mammograms. Early research shows the system resulted in fewer false positives and false negatives than human radiologists. Chinese are Archaeologists say they have discovered 200 more terracotta warriors and a large number of ancient weapons. The dig is part of a third excavation at the mausoleum of Emperor Qin Shi Huang. 8,000 warriors have already been discovered and make up the terracotta army. Built more than 2,000 years ago, they were meant to protect the emperor in the afterlife. Archaeologists estimate there are more than 6,000 clay figures still to be discovered. Pretty incredible. Yeah, here at 450, new year, new things. USA Today Today is predicting what the most popular consumer products will be in 2020. They say when it comes to kitchen appliances, instant pots and high-tech coffee makers will still keep selling. Meal kit delivery services are also expected to gain more traction. When it comes to technology, smartwatches and smart speakers and AirPods are at the top of the list. For entertainment, it's Roku TV and Kindle. And weighted blankets and essential oil diffusers are expected to become more popular. Well, an ordinary Uber ride turned into a dream come true for one Atlanta woman. After the break, a stranger's generous gift that helped her achieve a lifelong goal. And five puppies found abandoned in an Indiana State Forest. New at five, how the Humane Society says the situation could have been avoided. That's next. It's 451. We'll be right back. Sponsored by Citizens Energy Group. It's 4.55 on your Friday. Here's a live look at your wet commute over on the east side of town. Use caution heading into work this morning. This is a look at I-70 near Sherman Drive. Traffic is traveling up to speed. An Atlanta woman's college dreams came true, all thanks to an Uber ride. Latanya Young is a single mom, hairstylist, and an Uber driver. During a routine Uber ride, she shared her story with the passenger. She said she went to college but had to drop out because of more than $700 in debt to Georgia State University. After that ride, she got a surprising phone call from the school. And the message stated, okay, you're all set. You can register for classes now. And I was like, literally, I was blown away because a stranger has never done that or done anything like that for me. That stranger was named Kevin. He was the Uber passenger. Young graduated college a couple weeks ago with an associate's degree in criminal justice. She and Kevin met again when he also attended her graduation Aww. ceremony. What? A great, wow. We could all use more Kevins out there. We really could, and that is proof that fate right there, that was fate that he got into her car that yeah, day. So, so that cool. is a great story. I love that. All right. All right. Something that we don't love very much is all the rain we have yeah, today. We had yeah. a pretty nice day yesterday. It was above yeah. average. We saw some sunshine, but I was telling you that rain was coming and it came. It was heavy overnight. We're still seeing some of that light rain showers this morning. Also some patchy fog to start your Friday. So give yourself some extra time. We'll see a little bit of a break midday, and then we have more rain moving in overnight, which could mix with some snow, especially on the tail end as it starts to taper off on Saturday. Possibly some light snow accumulation with that. High Saturday only in the 30s, back to sunshine Sunday and Monday.